Bruchem Abayim B'Shem Hashem. Shem Egen Shir Tarim Lashas Boston. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's Shir. I'd like to welcome everyone who's Matriach to come in person. Machab Adarov and everyone who's joining in on the phone and, and elsewhere. Tav the Great Tzuzah sponsoring a Shir. Call Egen Shir Tarim at 718-851-8651 or email ist at yeshivanet.com. I'd like to give a big yeshikach to Mr. and Mrs. Ari Parnas for sponsoring tonight's shir. I'd like to give a big yeshikach to Mr. Mayor Stark for the support of tonight's shir. Lish Mas Ovid, Rabbi Shroel, Mayor Mayor, Lish Mas Imoy, Dvair Bas Masanot, Alei Masholim. I'd also like to give a big yeshikach to Mr. and Mrs. David Dax for the support of tonight's shir in honor of Rav Kayan. We have COVID once again to have with us. Rav Zev Kayan Shlita, not a drove of Adas Shuran or Shkarel Hashem Mishman of Chicago, who comes every year to the Chazakos with Divrei Cyrus, my cover to call and of Grand for tonight's Russian. Okay, Rabbi, so I, uh, I've been coming here for uh, a number of years already. I don't remember how many years. And uh, we've gone through different cycles of speaking about different things. We've spoken about things, la halacha, maybe things by uh, Tonight, I don't know how to title what I'm going to be speaking about, except that it's serious. I don't have a good word for that. And... Um, and uh, yeshivish terminology. Okay, we're going to speak about something I consider an extremely serious topic. I'm going to begin, I thought of this topic several weeks ago, but many things have changed in the last number of weeks. And the first thing I want to say is I know that it may not have hit home here as it did in Chicago, but there was a very serious incident that took place yesterday in Highland Park. Highland Park's about 20 minutes from where all the Yidden live in Chicago, all the Frum Yidden live in Chicago. Highland Park is full of Yidden. Out of the seven people who were killed and, and the 30 that were wounded, um, uh, two of the people that were killed were Yidden. And um, I had a f very close friend who was there and um, it was a very, very frightening experience obviously wishing everybody who was wounded that they should have a, a recovery. But the, the people there are pretty, uh, they're pretty shattered. People everywhere are pretty shattered. It was two, we it was two blocks away from a from shul. It was a, it was a pretty, uh, <laughs> obviously, it's an extremely serious incident. So we're talking about the State of the Union, halacha perspective, and Zayz uh, Ashgacha, that yesterday this, this is what took place. So uh, I'd like to begin the following way. Um, I made a cheshven before speaking here. My brother is here. We have we had four grandparents. They were all lived in America. And they were all here uh, more than 100 years ago. Our, uh, our grandfather, the earliest one, he came in 1904, 118 years ago. I happen to personally feel that... Um, I have a lot of Akaras that to America. A lot of Akaras that to the country. I've gained a lot living in this country. Baruch Hashem, my, uh, all my grandparents were here. Many of my great-grandparents lived here. And I had one great-great-parent who lived here as well. And now, Baruch Hashem, we have children, grandchildren. My siblings have grandchildren. My wife's siblings have grandchildren. It's a... It's a we're able to go to yeshiva here, able to have panosa here. A lot of akaras are toif. And as many gedolim have said, and we've all heard from many gedolim, it's a, it's a medina shal chesed. Neither gisa, for the first time in my life of living in America, I wanted to, I wrote a letter, just I didn't put it on paper yet, I wrote it in my head. I wrote a letter to the president and to the Supreme Court, and to Congress, the Senate, and lately I wrote a letter to the mayor of Chicago. 
Again, I haven't put it to paper yet, but I have the letters in my head. I have to write them. And I want to talk about the, the State of the Union. So let's talk about the State of the Union. The first question is, what's a union? What's a union? The State of the Union, what's a union? You cannot have a union without a chibur, meaning without people feeling connected to each other. So I'd like to begin tonight with a, a ha'ara that I heard from my mechutin zatzal. My son-in-law told me from his father, Yibar L'chaim, his father, Sheftel Neuberger, I just liked the way he asked the kasha. It grabbed me. He wanted to know the following. Bez Nissen, the first Bez Nissen in the Midbar. Kla Yisho left Mitzrayim on the 15th, Pesach. Bez Nissen in the Midbar. What happened on Bez Nissen in the Midbar? It was a gewaldic Shiloh. One Jew had a Shiloh. And he answered the Shiloh in an unusual way. Who was the Yid? Nisanel ben Tzua. Nisanel ben Tzua brought a carbon on the second day of Nisan. She's about to bring a carbon. He has a gewaldic Shiloh. What's the Shiloh? Yesterday, Nachshem and another brought a carbon. Nachshem and another carbon was gewaldic. So today, should I outdo him and bring a carbon? that's more precious and more beautiful in the, in the vernacular, shtadier than his carbon. Or not? Should I outdo him? Should I outdo him? What a gavald a So what did he decide, the son of Bensuah? The son of Bensuah made a decision. He made an incredible decision. I'm going to bring the exact same carbon as Nachshem ben No competition. Exact same carbon. The machshava, the Ramban, we all know it. The machshava is a different machshava, but the carbon, exact same carbon. That's what he is machlit. You know what happens when you do that? You make a union. You make a union. I don't want to make a race. I want to make a union. He brought a carbon, I'll bring the exact same carbon. What I'm thinking about, I'll think about. What he thought about, he thought about. Derek Agab, I'm wondering if that's why Rashi says the Pshat in the Korban on the Son of Ben Tzua, not by Nachshon Ben Yadav. Even though Chari Nachshon Ben Yadav is the first, when Rashi explains the Korban, he explains it by the Son of Ben Tzua, and not by Nachshon Ben Yadav. Nachshon Ben Yadav was the Mechadesh to bring the Korban, but the Son of Ben Tzua was the Mechadesh to bring the same Korban. Okay, Leil Shabbos, right? Relaxing time, finished davening, you walk home. So I'm walking home on El Shabbos, and one of the people who I normally walk home with is walking with me, and he asked me a kasha. This is the second best kasha that anybody ever asked me while I was in the shul. One kasha, I was walking into shul, somebody asked me a kasha, he mamish stopped me cold, he took away my breath. It was the first time I experienced breathtaking. It was a breathtaking event. I, I couldn't breathe. And this kasha was, was almost there. It was like a wild kasha. I'm walking home, a person says to me like this, First Rashi in Baloischa, Zacharin Akoyin is Chol Shadaitoi. Whatever Chol Shadaita means, he was depressed, he was sad, but it doesn't say physically. Chol Shadaita, his das, Chol Shadaita, his das was weak. She so says to me like this: what, what happened? What happened? Aaron felt bad, and we would say again in the vernacular, he fell apart. Chol Shadaita. Aaron fell apart. Aaron was told they should give up. He was the Monica Klai show for 60 years. Give it up to Moshe Rabbeinu. Oh, some of believe boy. Psh. I give up my job to Moshe, my brother. You want, I give it up. Give my job to my brother. He didn't get an invitation to bring a car, but it's Chol Shadaitai. What happened? I, I grabbed him. I said, I don't know what I'm going to say tomorrow, but I'm going to try to enter this kasha. I love the kasha. I love the kasha. Moshe Rabbeinu goes up to Shemayim. The end of Parshas Mishpatim. Goes up to Shemayim. So Moshe Rabbeinu is, is giving instructions. He's going away for 40 days. He's giving instructions. He's the leader of Kali Yisrael. He's giving instructions. So what's his instructions? Be'alaz ha'kenem omar. Shavu lonu b'zeh adash enoshev aleichem. V'nei. And what, what's the last instructions? V'nei Aaron v'churi mochem. Aaron v'churi here. Mi ba'al devorim. 
Yigash Aleyev. You have a Shaila? Bring a Tower and Chur. That was his last instructions. It really means you have a Dinah Torah. Dinah Torah. But it means all questions. So we don't know what happened for the first 39 days. Maybe there were questions. Maybe there weren't questions. Maybe Aaron answered all the questions. Maybe Aaron and Chur answered all the questions. But on day 39 came a big question. A Gevald of Gishayel, day 39. 39 comes the question to Aaron and to Chur. Where's Moshe? Where's Moshe? Ho, ho, ho. That was the question. Where's Moshe? Where's Moshe? So now we have a Shiloh. Where is he? Where is he? What happened? So what happened now? What happened now? So Chur got stark. Chur got very stark. Because he saw where this question was going. And Chur took a very strong stand about this question. What happened? What happened to Chur? They killed him. They killed him. They killed him. It's a very strong question. Chur took a strong stand. He got killed. Now Aaron is the only one left. What should he do, Aaron? He, he's feeling the apicorsis is coming. The eagle is coming. He feels something's coming here. What should he do? Strong stand. He'll get killed. Okay, I can't go into all the details right now. This was a Shabbat Shubhid Russia a number of years ago. But I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to go to the Yisoyed. Aaron made a decision. This was his decision. I have to figure out a way to stop this without getting into a fight. Because if they kill me, if they kill me, people remember Kinnis? If they kill a Novi and a Koyan on the same day, they're not gonna have a Kapar. I have to work this out. I gotta stop them, but I can't do what Hur did. Even though he was right, I can't do what he did. I can't do what he did. So whatever Aaron did, we're not gonna get into it, but you know that there's a Pusik here that is left with Aaron Hakoyan for the rest of his life. You know what the Pasuk is? It's a very scary Pasuk. It's a Pasuk in Kisisa. If Hashem punished Klal Yisrael, that they made the eagle, Hashem Osa Aaron. The Torah says Aaron made the eagle. That's a scary Pasuk. Aaron made the eagle. Aaron made a very difficult decision. I'm not going to let them kill me. I'm going to try to work this out. And he took a tremendous, unbelievable pasik, Asha Asa Aaron. You know what happened as a result of that? Aaron is called in the Torah, Aaron made eagle. You know what happened as a result of that? Now let's go to Aleph Nissen. We don't usually put these dates together. What parsha is Aleph Nissen? Vayibayama Shmini. Shmini is Aleph Nissen. Nasa was also Aleph Nissen. They're separated by a lot of a lot of sukkim here, a lot of parshas. Shmini's Aleph Nissan. What happened to Aleph Nissan? Shmini is supposed to come down. Shiva Shimei Amaluim is the last seven days of Adar. The eighth day is Rishkaidish Nissan. Aaron walks in. Remember, the Mishkan was finished on Chofei Kislev, and they were waiting. Finally, Zayin Amaluim, and now it's Rishkaidish Nissan. And Aaron walks in, hits the switch, so to speak. Lights don't go on. Turns to Moshe Rabbeinu, his brother. What does he say to him? Rashi brings it down. What does he say to Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe, my brother. Moshe, my brother. You brought me into this matzav. You brought me into this matzav. Moshe, Moshe, ochi, kacha, sisali. She nechnasti, minisbayashti. I'm embarrassed because the shkina didn't come down because I did the eagle. Miyad nechnas Moshe, imoy. You know me already, Rabbi. It's like Chumash and Rashi. Chumash and Rashi. Miyad Nichnas Imoy Moshe. Moshe Imoy Moshe came in, who picked Shirachim, you are the Shkino, you saw the Shkino came down. But that was step one. Aleph Nissen. Aleph Nissen. What happened on the 13th day or the 14th? I don't know what day. But it was after 12 days. After 12 days. What happens? Aaron Akoyan says in Pasha's Baal what's going on? Somebody made it by mitzvah. I didn't get an invitation. Zok Rashi again. We didn't get invited. 12 days, every day of carbon, every day of Nasi. Where's me? Where's my shaman? What happened to us? You know why? Back to Diego. Back to Diego. He knows what he sacrificed. 
Aaron Akari made a decision to save Klal Yisrael. He knows that. Am I still, am I still responsible for the ego? Whatever you got is bigger than them. Don't worry about it. I want to ask you a question. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Greatest day of the year. What's the greatest day of the year? No? Come on. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yom Kippur. What's the greatest moment on the greatest day of the year? No? What? The Avoida, right? No, no, the Avoida. In the base of English, right? The Avoida is the greatest moment on the greatest day of the year in the greatest place with the greatest person, right? Kayin Gadol, right? What happens? He walks in. Kayin Gadol walks in. What happens when he walks in? Uh, don't, don't, no, 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 don't go in. Do not go in. They tell the Kayin Gadol, don't go in. Change your clothes. Why should I change my clothes? Big day kuna. Big day kuna. Why am I changing my clothes? Because of the ego. You know what that means? Every single Yom Kippur, every time a Kohen Gadol walked in, the five of them in Yom Kippur, ego! Change your clothes! Somebody in Shul once asked me a kashi, he told me, he didn't ask me a kashi, he told me a bald like a word. So the Kohen Gadol has to walk in, change your clothes, no gold! Ego! Ain't got to take it out since ego. Where did he do the avoid? In front of what? What's inside the Kodesh Kodashim in the first base of Migdash? What? What's it made out of? Oh, it's made out of gold. Really? Why don't they move the iron out in your kipper? It's made out of gold. It's not my kasha, it's a Murray Digger kasha. What's the answer? Unbelievable answer. Who made the iron? Betzalel, Ben? Ben? Chor! Chor! Chor didn't make the ego. Chor fought! Chor got killed! Chor's gold is allowed inside. Ain't got taken out since the ego does not apply to Chor. Aaron Akayin, he can't go in with gold. Why? Because Aaron was concerned about the state of the union. Aaron worked to save the union. Like Nassan al worked to save the union. Aaron Akayin knew I could do what Khor did. But Akayin couldn't do it because Kali Yisrael wouldn't survive if they killed the Kayin and the Navi. Unbelievable. This, this year. Every time a Kohen Gadol walks in, he has to take off his clothing. Change his clothing. The son of Ensua, Aaron a Kohen. Then we come to Shlach. Then we come to Shlach. What happens in Shlach? Oh, yeah, Shlach. The Sushi Shoran brings down the Zoyer. The Sushi Shoran brings down the Zoyer. The Meraglim said, we don't want to be in Eretz Yisrael. Why not? It's up to Zoyer because we're going to lose our job. Well, I don't know what the pshat is. I don't know what the pshat is. Why they thought they're going to lose their job? What was their concern? But the Mitzvah Shor brings down the Zoyar. We were afraid. We're going to, they were afraid they're going to lose their job. What they do? They came back, and they said we can't go. They made a decision which caused us to be in Flatbush tonight. We're in Flatbush because of that decision. You know what their decision was? My my kavod. My job, me, I come first. That's not working for the State of the Union. That's not working for the Union. The Meraglim didn't do what Aaron Akoyan did. The Meraglim didn't do what the Son of Mentua did. The Meraglim did what was good for them. And then comes Lom Kairach, this giant. Ron Leib, Shimon Zatzal says, Mila Hashem Eli, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Mila Hashem Eli, when, when the Shwab Zatzal went to the Chavetz Chaim Zatzal, and the Chavetz Chaim, the famous, the famous interaction, and the Chavetz Chaim said to the Shwab, are you a Kayin? He didn't know what's going on. He said, are you a Kayin? He said, no. He said, why not? He didn't want the answer. And the Chavetz Chaim gave the famous answer, because when Moshe Rabbeinu said, Mila Hashem Eli, my Zayda went, and your Zayda didn't go. Kairach went. Kairach went. He was like, Raisa Mensch Kairach. It's so hard to understand the whole Pasha. But one thing is for sure, whether it's Kinn or whatever happened, my Rosh, Tuz, Zeh, Rashi asked it twice, what was going on with Kairach? But the one thing is for sure, Kairach wanted something for himself and not beneficial for Klai Yisrael. He did not work for the union. 
Heard a gavaldi gavort this year. Mamisha gavaldi gavort. Such a bayur de gedig. You have to work it out with other psukim. But the vort they said it's from the chedusha rim. It's not in my chedusha rim. I, there are different, a few different printings of the chedusha rim. But listen to this pasuk. We all know the pasuk. Pasuk is in kiseitze. Zochar es hashe osel lucha amolik v'derech v'teischem mitzrayim. Frek the chedusha rim. Zochar es osel lucha amolik. Zochar es osel luchem amolik. What's the chah? That's the Chedusha Rim's gash. Zokhtar Chedusha Rim, when everybody in Klal Yisrael is a lachah, then kumt amalek. When Klal Yisrael is a lachem, amalek doesn't show up. When Klal Yisrael is a lachah, amalek shows up. I just want to be myself, I mean, not myself, I'm just saying. But when is it a tzalv and suar, the shechina comes. When it's arna kayin, the shechina comes. When it's lachah, amalek comes. Okay, let's go a little weiter. Let's go a little weiter. That's the union. Let's talk about the state. Let's talk about the state. What do you do with this Mishnah, Rabbi Yisrael? Everybody knows the Mishnah. It's a very famous Mishnah. Pirkei Ovis. Beginning of Perek Gimel. Rabchanina skana koyin emoyimer. Perik Gimel, in some it's Mishnah Beis, some it's Mishnah, well, different numbers here, but it's per, beginning of Perik Gimel. Chini skan ha-koyin ha-moyimah, havi mispalo b'shloi mesho malchus. Davin for the shalom of the country in which you reside. The Rav says it means umas ha-oilam. We're not talking about a Jewish Medina only. We're talking about a Medina in which you live. Davin for the shloi of the malchus. Now, let's listen to Chazal. She'omole moiro... Because if not, for people fearing the Malchus, Ish Esrayehu, man to his friend, Chaim Bilo'o. What does Chaim Bilo'o mean? Swallow him up alive. Ish Esrayehu, Chaim Bilo'o. We'll swallow him up alive. What in the world does that mean? Chazal are not dramatic. They're not writing poetry here. Every letter, every word of Chazal is measured. Chayim below O. They will swallow him. What in the world does Chazal mean? What a scary thing. Good morning, Avodah Zara. This Gemara is really brought down by all the Mepharshim on the Mishnah. The Gemara says that Avodah Zara. The Gemara is a kasha on a posseg in Chabakuk. The bottom of Gimel Amid Beis. Omar Yehuda Omar Shmuel. Ma'idich si v'tase odom kidegei hayom. We're going to make man like the fish of the yam. So the Gemara gives a number of terutzim. On Dalet and Manal, the Gemara says, Dovar Achev. Nocha terutz. Ma dogim shebiyam. Kol ha'godol mei chaveiroi. Boi le'yes chaveiro. The bigger the fish, they swallow the smaller fish. I'm not asking anybody if they remember from their young days. I remember my young days watching big fish swallow, open up their mouth. They go right through a school of fish and they swallow them all up. It looked very, uh, it didn't look uh, gory. I don't know. It looked, uh, I know, uh, you know, it looked, uh, I don't know. It looked like fish. It says here, Ma dogim shebiyam kol agodom echabero bo leyes chabero af bideyodom. Il mole moiro. If they would not be frightened, shall malchus of the government the bigger fish would, small, would swallow the smaller fish. This is what it says in the Mishnah. Because if not for the Meiro, a man would swallow his fellow man alive. Okay, Adkan is the Mishnah, the Pasuk in Habakkuk, the Mishnah, and the Gemara explaining what the Mishnah means. Okay. Then we had Siyat HaNishmaya. 
Okay, now I am a recipient all the time of Siyat HaDishmaya. It's because I was coming here, it's because I'm in the shul, I don't know why, I unbelievable Siyat HaDishmaya. I'm learning with my Chavrusa, and I'm telling him over this Vishnu, we're talking, he says, you know, I think there's a Medrash. So I said, you think there's a Medrash? We gotta find the Medrash. Okay, let's see if I can find the Medrash in this, in this print here. It's a Medrash in Esther. All of us know, everybody in this room knows part of the Medrash. But the other part of the Medrash, I don't know how many people know. I didn't know it. I didn't know it. Let's see if I can find it here in this Medrash. I'm sorry, I should have turned to the pages before. Let me just tell you like this. You know, it's embarrassing. I always feel embarrassed. You know, the Gemara and Megillah, Achashverish makes a cheshman of the 70 years. I'm embarrassed. I don't know Tanakh as well as Achashverish. Achashverish is so around the Pesukim and Yemi here, there, but I, 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 I don't know it. I tell people all the time, Machashirish knew nobody better than me for sure. I can't tell you better than everybody else, better than me for sure. Now, there are a lot of Goyim who knew a lot of Torah. One of those Goyim who knew a lot of Torah was Haman. Haman knew a lot of Torah. Shaitan the Medrash over here like this. Haman made a Cheshman. We all know the Cheshman. Haman made a Cheshman. What was his Cheshman? His Cheshman about when should I try to destroy Klau Yisrael, right? When should, I, when should I try to destroy Klau Yisrael? What month? So the Gemara says, I mean, not the Gemara, the Pasuk says, that he made a cheshman, Adar. Adar was a great month to destroy Klai Yishol. Now you're all going to tell me, of course we know the Medrash. Adar was a great month to destroy Klai Yishol because that's the month that Moshe Rabbeinu, what? Dies, right? Moshe Rabbeinu dies. Moshe Rabbeinu dies in that month, and therefore Haman was thrilled. Everybody knows that part of the Medrash. I do not know why we don't know the other part of the Medrash. What's the other part of the Medrash? What's that? No, 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 listen to the other part of the Medrash. He makes a cheshman about all the months. He makes a cheshman about all the months. Unbelievable. What's the cheshman? Every single month, every single month has a mazel. We all know that. There's 12 mazalas, every month has a mazel. Okay. And every month has a tzaddik in Klai Yisrael that's connected to the month, that protects Klai Yisrael during that month. And you've got to see Haman making cheshboyness over here. Which tzaddik in which month? It's unbelievable. Come to gain Adar. Adar. So, there's nobody to protect Kaisha in this month. There's no tzaddik in this month. Not only is there no tzaddik in this month, but the mazel of Adar is dug. I grew up in Crown Heights. In Crown Heights, we had an eight apartment, apartment building on 1040 Eastern Parkway. And the Hawaiian Rebbe came and he moved into the building. On the bottom floor, there was a shtibel, and in the basement, there was a mikvah. Before that, there was a dentist's office, and that was the building I lived in. So I used to dive in the shtibel sometimes. I dive, we we dive in the cross street, and she used to park like whatever, the other shows. What, what. So I remember the first time I saw it, they put up a picture of a fish on the wall of the shul during other. A fish, right? They still do it, right? Some shuls still, still do it. Yeshivas don't do it, right? Literature shuls don't do it. But I see the shuls, they put up a fish, right? Why, why? Mazel dog. So you know who's happy about that? Haman! Dog, give all the, you know what dog means? The big fish, swallow the little fish. And then he said, and my Shabbat also died. <laughs> Finished, I got Klai Yishu. Dog, big fish, swallow little fish. That's what's going on here, dog. Okay? Dog. So now we have a Pasik, we have a Mishnah, we have a Gemara, we have a Medrash, that dog means Big fish swallow little fish. So Chazal, that if you don't have a malchus in place, big people swallow little people. Finished. Okay. In the Sefer Leket Rishima Sanpurim, it's unbelievable. I think it's on Daf Hay, right at the beginning of the Sefer. Leket Rishima Sanpurim, written by Rav Nosan Vachfog, Lozech Hazad, Geruch, and Mashiach, and Lehi. He mentions a kasha from his Rebbe, Rav Yeruchim, a famous Rav Yeruchim. In fact, Rav Yeruchim, a kasha. On this Mishnah, Chaim below. Zokra Yeruchim, only Yeruchim can say a kash like this. Zokra Yeruchim, it's impossible. It's impossible? Yeruchim says impossible. A human being cannot swallow another human being alive. Impossible that he can hear the screaming of the human being and do it. It's impossible, says Yeruchim. There's no such thing. Yeruchim says this. Ay, the Mishnah says Chaim below. He says Chaim below means you're going to swallow the person alive because you're not going to hear the person screaming. You're not going to see the person screaming. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. In Illinois, 
a number of years ago. This is my shoya kachoya. A woman was driving a car, inebriated. I don't know from what. Okay, she's inebriated. She hits a man. The man slides up the hood of the car, and his head and shoulder goes through the windshield. Yeah? And she drives home and parks the car in the garage with the man in the windshield. The story doesn't end. For two days, he screams, help me, help me, help me, help me, and he died. That's the view of him. She didn't hear a thing. Ish esreyeu chayim below. So, the Mashiach, in the name of Rabbi Rucham, that the Pshat in the Mishnah is, Ish Esrael Chaim below, because I can ignore somebody else. How in the world can I ignore somebody else? What's the answer? You know what the answer is? I'm a Rangatot of myself. My Dea, my COVID, my male, I can ignore someone else. Ish Esrael Chaim below. Mashiach says, and like a regime is that he davened in Kelm. I can't talk to you about Kelm right now, but if you know anything about Kelm, Kelm was unusual of unusual. It was a, it was a, it was a different yeshiva. I, 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 Mashiach used to give us vaden and Kelm, what was going on in Kelm. He sat next to a Yidin Kelm, a big tzaddik named Rav Levitin. It was a big, big tzaddik. So Mashiach got an aliyah. He was a bacher. In the old days, before we became very wealthy, in shuls, when the bacher got an aliyah, he turned to the person next to him and borrowed a talus. Now you go up to the beam, uh, the six talisim over there, whatever you need, uh, you know, besides the coffee rooms and all the shows, right? We got talisim, right? Whatever you need, right? In those days, you borrowed a talus, right? So the mashgiach took a talus from somebody and got an aliyah. It comes back from the aliyah. After davening, whatever, this, this tzaddik, the beloved thing says to him, what am I, a shtick holtz? I'm sitting next to you. You borrowed a talus from somebody else? Why did you borrow a talus from me? So Mashiach was scared of him. I thought Sadiq was going to ask him for his talus. He was saying, I'm standing next to you. You didn't see me? What's going on here? That's what Rabbi Rucham is talking about. You can be so orangutan in yourself, you can't see anybody else. Because my daya, my needs, my tzairah, my covet, my whatever it is, my, 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 I can't hear anybody else. It's an unbelievable thing. Look it up. Like of Rishima Sanpur. Okay, now let's talk weiter. I want to ask you Shaila Halacha. Without Dayanim, without Dayanim, without judges, without Malchus, this Moiro, without the Moiro of Malchus, Ish Yisrael Chaim below. Uh, a Rashiva, he, he, he gets covered. You know, Rashiva gets covered. Sits in the front. Tamidim stand up for him. He gives shiurim. He gets covered. A Rav, Rav gets covered. You know, he says he says shmuzin, speaks in shul, sits in the mizrach front. A Rishkayil gets covered. May a principal gets covered. What about a dayan? Not an avbez. A dayan. Person learns through shulchan aruch. And he sits by Dine Taira. Well, what happens to him? What happens to him? So I, I'll tell you about, uh, I, I'll tell you what happens at a Din Taira. A Din Taira, you can have a Din Taira for 30, 40, 50 million dollar Din Taira. You got to read through 500, 1,000, 2,000 pages. People get giving you all this information and whoever loses hates you. And the pay is like, you know, I mean, your mamish get hundreds of thousands of dollars per session, right? Who, who, who would want to be a dying? Why would anybody want to be a dying? So it's a chazal, it's an interesting thing. Interesting thing. It doesn't say this about a rav or a shiva who gives a geshmak a shir. Kol hadon din emes la mitoy, nasa shutl la kodesh baruch hu vice abracious. Mr. what? Call him a sheer godel. Lift day, I wasted 30,000 people in some stadium somewhere. He's a shot to my severity. No, no, no. Call it done, they never saw me toy. Now it's a shot to my severity. What happened? One. Two. Nacha Chazal. The Shiloh with the Gishos, how Rashi brings it down this way. What about the diet who says, you know, 10 hours, four days a week, 40 hours I gave up in one day entire. I didn't learn a word. I didn't learn a word. 
Kaladon de Nemes Amitai, Malva Kosaki, Isaac Betira Kalayoi. Whew. You get credit like learning all, not stop learning, Isaac, like you were Isaac in Tyre all day. Then there's another halacha. This is what really brought it out. We're learning so at 6 o'clock in the morning of a kid bake here. We're learning Hilchas Dayonis. We're finishing Hilchas Dayonis. So in Hilchas Dayonis, say Tazoy. What happens if a Dayan, a Dayan makes a mistake? He makes a mistake. He makes a mistake. Makes a mistake. And the mistake, la halacha, is considered a garmi, and the Dayan should pay for making the mistake. He said something, whatever happened, and they killed an animal. He said an animal was trafed, not in the year of day of Shiloh, in the day moment of Shiloh. Whatever happened, and now he cost somebody money, the halacha is garmi, garmi, chayif to pay. Zok the halacha, Dayan doesn't pay. Dayan doesn't pay? Why not? Zok the sma and the shach both. Because if you make the Dayan pay, you'll have no Dayan. Not only don't I get COVID, not only don't I learn, not I got to pay if I make a mistake, also get out of here, leave me alone. Who wants this? And you know what happens if that's the attitude? There's no day on him. You know what happens if there's no day on him? You can't function. You know what happened to Moshe Abedo's son? I said this before, I alluded to it a second ago. Me, Baal Dabar, Yigash, that postic that Moshe Abedo told Aaron and Chor was, if you have any DNA, Tyro and Klai Yisrael, go to Aaron and Chor. What did Moshe Abedo do when he came down after the second time in Yom Kippur the next day? What happened? What was he doing all day? He wasn't passing Shalos Bas HaVachalom. He was passing Shalos of DNA Tyro. And Yisrael said to him, this can't go on. You've got to make a judicial system. It has to be a... I'm not saying everybody should say that I've gone through so many DNA Tyro in my lifetime. If a person goes up to Shemayim after 120 and he never went to within Torah in his life, I am sure he's going to get a, 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 a big yeshikaya for that. But there has to be a place to go for Dine Torah. If there's no judicial system, the, the, the community cannot function. So therefore we have all these things for the Yonim. You're a shut of my separation since though you learned Torah and if you did, made a mistake, a legitimate mistake, you don't pay. Otherwise there's no, uh, we, can't, we can't function. All of this was a hagdama to the serious part. Here's the serious part. Here's part one of the serious part. I'm in my seventh decade living in the United States of America. I said before, I like this country. I spoke to three very, very prominent individuals in Clark Israel. I'm not going to mention their names. I'm going to tell you everybody in this room knows their names. Very high-level people, extremely high-level people. You all know their names. I asked them all the following question in preparation for this year. I said, I want to ask you something. Do you feel right now America has a, is going through a bump in the road? Or do you feel that the ground is changing underneath us? This is not a, I'm not talking to scare anybody. It's not my point here. I, I want to talk realistically. I said at the beginning, it's, I can't have another term except serious. Here's the serious part. Where are we holding? I'm an optimist by nature. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable. I'm asking these three people, what do you think? I'm not going to tell you their answers, but their answers were worse than I think. And I'm going to tell you something now. I mentioned before I want to write a letter to the President and the Supreme Court and to the Senate and to Congress. I also want to write a letter to the mayor of the city of Chicago. The city of Chicago is the third largest city in the United States of America. I'm going to say something now. I want, I want, I want, you, I want you to appreciate what I'm saying here. I'm not in favor of what I'm about to say, but in a certain vein, I, want, I would like the people in the country to stop and reflect for a moment. Last week, something happened in the Supreme Court. I'm not, by the way, everybody's like, this is just Hajgokha, that all these things flew into my lap. I'm not, I'm not big into reading anymore. I used to like to read what's going on. I can't find anything to read. That, whatever. I don't want to go, with, I'm not going there right now. I don't want to press my buttons. But, you know, last week, they nominated to the Supreme Court for the first time. Uh, this, is, this is the way they say, right? A black woman to the Supreme Court for the first time, right? So we live in a country. Four members of the nine members of the Supreme Court are women. 
There are two African Americans on the Supreme Court, and there's a Jew on the Supreme Court. Rebbeinu Yamakula, what do you want from America? It's an incredible country. It's not an incredible country. There aren't nine white men on the Supreme Court like the used to Taina. Isn't that a good representation of the country? What's the matter with this country? What do you want from the country? Come on, look at the Supreme Court. Didn't we have an African-American president? I'm going to tell you something else now, and don't take it out of context. Please don't take it out of context. I'm a very, I, I don't know what to say about myself. I, I, I'm a little bit of a forward thinker, and sometimes people don't like that I'm too forward. Don't bring up these subjects. What do you have to talk about it for? We don't have to hear about it. I, I, I'm not, that's not me. I, I'm afraid. If I'm afraid, I talk about it. You don't want to hear it, you don't have to hear it. 20 years ago, I didn't do this. You imagine, I'm around 35 years, I'm about 30, 50 years. You imagine 20 years ago, I would have gotten them said, Rabbi Isai, I want to tell you, you got to, this is what I always talk about. I always talk about the kids. I'm always talking about the kids. You got to make, you got to prepare your children. 20 years ago, that's what, 2002, right? Tov Shin Samach Bey, right? 20 years ago. Rabbi Isai, you got to prepare your children. Because it's going to come a time that the mayor of the city of Chicago is going to be a woman, African American, Married to a Jewish woman. You would have told me, I'm out of my mind. You would have told me, sit down. And what's going on in Chicago? That's what's going on in Chicago right now. Okay, that's Chicago. And she came to visit all the shuls one Shabbos. She walked down Tui, which is a street that has 14 shuls, and she wanted to see all the shuls on Shabbos. I got to get to them. I'm going to say something. You want to complain? I'm talking to the people at large, not the people in this room for a moment. You want to complain about America? What do you want from America? How much more do you need? She's the mayor of the third largest city in the country. But I have this message for the mayor. I said this in Shulan Shabbos, and I wasn't planning on saying this at all. But the mayor did an atrocity, in my humble opinion. I don't know if you know or not. I'm not going to spell it out here. But she said incredible nivel peh about a Supreme Court justice. Incredible nibble pay about a Supreme Court justice. And this is what I'm going to write. Believe that, I'm going to write this to her. I'm going to, first, I'm going to give you an example. I don't know how many people here remember this or not. Shabbos afternoon, when I was a kid, Shabbos afternoon, my brother is here. He could be made. I don't know what other family members are watching or listening or whatever. You played Monopoly. Shabbos afternoon, play Monopoly, right? You could play a game for two hours, for three hours. Now, here's the only way the game ends. There are two ways for a Monopoly game to end. One way is somebody loses. And he admits, I lost. Game over. One way is, a guy's close to losing, but he doesn't want to lose. So he sticks his finger under the board, and he goes, achoo! And the whole board goes flying up, and all the money goes flying up, and oh, yeah, yeah, game's over. I want to say something, though. It's very scary. Democracy only works if everybody's asking them to play by the rules. If people want to stop playing by the rules, you have a very scary situation. You know what situation we have? We have the Mishnah. The mayor of the third largest city in the United States of America cannot talk nivel pe about a Supreme Court justice. And nobody can go with a gun or a knife across the street from the Supreme Court justice. I'm not talking about the crime, Be'etzem. I'm talking about this Mishnah. This Mishnah, Chazal Beruach Kodsham, told us a Mishnah, which is the gate of the 2022 Tav Shin Pei Beis. It's so no gay, it's frightening. Now, if you don't want to say that, I'm not here to talk about it. But I'm here to talk about one thing for sure. That we have to daven for the Medina. I want to read you something. Also, Hashgacha Pratis. Mamish Hashgacha Pratis. Found this this week. Mamish, it's unbelievable. Here. December 8th, 1804. Anybody know what happens on December 8th, 1804? A document which is found right now in the archives of the Aguda. It was published in honor of a day of thanksgiving called by the Rabbonim. What, what, what the Rabbonim called day Thanksgiving for? For the coronation of the Emperor Francis II of Austria. You hear this? I don't know how to pronounce these words. The 
hear zengeful un gebet, means the thoughts and prayers of the Jews of Prague were firmly with the Kaiser Franz de Seiten, who was called the Roman Emperor. Also in Jewish minds that day was his Empress, Maria Theresa, later notorious for expulsion of Jews in parts of her realm. But in that day, it was all wines and roses. Now, what did they do? Can you imagine anybody doing this nowadays? They throw him out of yeshiva. He's not yeshiva. He's not a chvestet vos. Here we go. The entire community, the proclamation proclaimed, would gather before davening on Shabbos. The entire community, before davening on Shabbos, to recite six parakim of Tillam. And later say a special tefillah composed for the occasion. Rejoice, O nation of Bohemia. Wait. Long live our master, Kaiser Franz. Long live the queen, the Kaiserin Maria Theresa. May they and their children rule over Austria until the end of days. Is that being misfollowed, Shemesh Lamachos? For many years, I have a Zeicher that sitting next to me was a Geraldic Ochoshev Rav named Rabbi Gedalia Dov Schwartz. He used to be a Rav in, in, in Borough Park. And he moved to Chicago. And uh, he, was like, uh, he used to dive with his Alta Marzer. He showed me Alta, the Alta Marzer in Yom and Arayim. Inside, we had a Mishaberich for the Tsar and the Tsar and Tino. In, in the Marzer! In the Marzer, by name! The Tsar was in Oiv Yisrael. Why do we stop using the Tefillah of Eisach? I don't know, some of another other ones told me, after, after Hub in Europe, we, the, the collectively we decided to stop. Fine. Whatever the Pshat is. Some people still say it. Some don't. But one thing is for sure, the Davin! The Mishnah didn't become that Nogea. Why do we stop using the Tefillah of Eisach? below. Chaim below is a Meshuggah that sits on top of a rooftop and shoots 35 people. If somebody told me he was there. It was a terrible day for Highland Park. And it was just another bad day for America. What an unbelievable thing. Now I want to say one more thing. Mrs. Lightfoot, she's the mayor. You are not allowed to pollute our society. I and all of us here represent thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of Yiddish Kindlech boys and girls who don't hear nibble pen. How dare you pollute this country? You have no right to pollute this country. You're upset with the Supreme Court? Fine. Bring it up in the democratic process. Don't pollute this country. And don't pollute my children. How dare you? You have no right to do that. I don't care how upset you are. And you can explain to me why you're so upset. Because this country is still the best country in the world. And everybody who's complaining about the country, I'd like to see. Go move to Mozambique and see if you can keep all your dollars there. Go find another country to move to. Uh, you can move to Russia. Go, go live with Putin. I don't see anybody running away so fast. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Our rabbis, quote unquote, our Chazal, the Ruach Kodshom told us, if you don't stop it, it's going to be. I don't want to say what it's going to be. I'll say you state in the Mishnah. Okay, Rabbi Say, let's, uh, let's talk about making the union. Did you read the story? I called up the person who wrote the story and gave me a Shekayach. You know who Moshe Feder is? I don't know who he is. Moshe Feder had elite status on um, several airlines. And Delta Airlines said, if you have elite status in any airline, you call us, we'll give you elite status on Delta. Okay, so if you got elite status on American, you get, automatically get elite status on Delta. So he took the elite status on Delta, and he flew to Atlanta on Delta Airlines. As they're in the airport waiting to board, they make an announcement. The announcement is that we are honored that Lieutenant Gibson a World War II veteran who fought in World War II in the Air Force is on the flight. Everybody gives him an ovation. Moshe Feder walks over to the person behind the counter and says like this, I have elite status. I'm sitting in first class. Give Lieutenant Gibson my seat. Shh. A man, a woman, whoever it was, makes the announcement and everybody claps. 
So he's sitting in the back of the plane. He gets off the plane a little later than he's used to getting off the plane. So Kaddish Baruch Hu, excuse me one second. So he gets off the plane, and he gets onto the shuttle to the rental car. And uh, he's wearing the insignia of his office. And a person walks over to him and says, uh, you work, I forgot the name of his office, you work in, 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 in fixing up apartment buildings around the country. You've got a big business. He says, yeah, how do you know? Who are you? He says, I work for Camden. Camden? I'm trying to get through to you for five months. Well, consider it done. Let's do business. That's somebody who's uh, working for the union. You meet a vet from World War II, you give me a shikayach. Every cop I walk by, I used to do it only in Eretz Israel to the soldiers. Every cop I walk by, I say thank you for serving. Every Shabbos morning we have a cop in front of the shul. Everybody in the shul goes over and gives yashikayach to the cop. The cop doesn't need yashikayach. Everybody in the country hates the cops. The cops in Chicago, when they are down and they need chizuk, the head of the police in Chicago says, go to West Rogers Park and go drive through the West Rogers Park neighborhood. You'll get chizuk over there. The Jews will give you a shakayach, they'll give you donuts, they'll give you coffee. That's what the head of the police in Chicago said. It's not a joke. We're living in a country. Okay, now, let's go a step weiter. Not everybody flies first class, can do what Moshe Feder did with Lieutenant Gibson, but let's go a step weiter. There's a, I spent a long time on this. There's a Zoya, not a Zoya, excuse me. There's a Kuzari, a Kuzari. Kuzari says, ha, ha chosid, a leader, a leader has to be a chassid. What does that mean, a leader has to be a chassid? A leader has to be a chassid. A leader has to be, a leader has to be strong. A leader has to be tough-skinned. A leader has to be a chassid. What's a chassid? Zok the kuzari. If you don't work on yourself to be in control of yourself, you're not allowed to control other human beings. If you're not a chassid, you can't be a manik. Finished. What a murder the Gavort. Okay, let's talk about two people who are in control of themselves. I love these two stories. Let's say them quickly. Two stories, give all the good stories. They came to the Chabina. Chabina, the Chabina Rav, <laughs> unbelievable. Going Oilam, no Shaitas. He came to the Chabina Rav, he said, Rabbi, we have a Shiloh. What's a Shiloh? The Shiloh is we have an 82 year old man and he needs surgery. If he doesn't have the surgery, Achman of son, he'll die. But if he does have the surgery and he's going to have to take uh, anesthesia, he's not going to wake up. He doesn't have the Kaikas to wake up. What should we do? What should we do? And then they said, Rebbe, you're the, you're the Shiloh. They were his doctors. They didn't want to have to say it to him directly. He said he gave it round the bell. What should we do? What should we do? So he said, I have an Eitzah. What's the Eitzah? He said, I'll wear my Tefillin. I'll wear my Tefillin. I will not fall asleep if I'm wearing my Tefillin. You give me anesthesia, I'll stay up. I said, it's not good. Not shy. Okay, that mice I didn't check out. That mice is in a book, and that's the mice is Mukubal. Well, I want to tell you another mice in a book, but this mice I checked out. David Pavarsky. David Pavarsky, the father of Beryl Pavarsky, one of the three founding Russian yeshiva. I was there to see him a few times in Panovich. He used to come 4 o'clock, and I didn't see him 4 o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock in the morning, he sat in the right corner over there. So one day he walks up the steps of Panovich yeshiva, all the steps, he fell. He fell, he got himself up, he crawled to yeshiva, he sat in his corner, he was learning. Afterwards, somebody told his son, the president of yeshiva, Rebel Vavatsky, your father fell. So he told me, your father fell, he went to his father. I said, yeah, I have a little pain in my shoulder, whatever. So he went to the doctor. The doctor said it's broken, somewhere over here it's broken, he needs a cast. He needs a cast. Rebel Vavatsky says to the doctor, <laughs> that's not shy. why do you need a cast? You need a cast, you can't move your arm. Your arm has to stay still, so we'll heal. Zakhtar Dovah Pavarsky to the doctor. There is the Balabos. Ich bin the Balabos. Other the hat is the Balabos. I'll tell my hand when to move. I don't want to move my hand. I won't move it. I don't need a cast. I asked his son the story. I saw his son. Is, <laughs> tell me, is, is, it, is it true? Tell me, tell me, is it true? Absolutely, I was there. It's 100% true. There is the Balabos from the hunt. Ich bin the Balabos, or the hunt is the Balabos. Ha chosid hu amoysho. Ha chosid hu amoysho. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about the team. The team. They're building the, the base medish. I don't know how many I don't know how many years ago. Twenty years ago, I don't know how many years ago. Gare is building a base medish. Big base medish. Gare is building a big base medish. So the Gare Rebbe calls up one of Hasidim and says, Gates of bells, go to bells. And measure how big the base medish is in bells. And make our base medish 
Four, I'm a small one. You hear, you hear the Meister? Four, I'm a small one. I know, don't make four, I'm as bigger. Four, I'm as bigger than they're going to make. Four, that's what I'm, smaller. Smaller. Four, I'm a small one. Next. They come to the wife, the wife, the wife of the stipler. And they say to her, Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim's living in a small apartment. He has kindler, he doesn't have enough room. We want to pay, we want to get him a bigger apartment. Another room, another room, like another room. Like you, know, you think I'm going to say you're going to get him a 10 bedroom, one more room. She says no. A mother says no. A mother, her son, her eight no. Oh, well, why not? Because if my Chaim is going to get one more room, everybody else in B'nai Brak is going to feel crowded. I can't, Reb Chaim lives like this, we can live like this. No, Reb Chaim needs another room. I also need another room. A mother. A mother. Okay, the, the last mice said, no, no shaykhs. But this mice had such an effect on me, I'll tell you what I did because of it. The Blush of a Rebbe. Blush of a Rebbe, that's all. Lost his whole family. He gets remarried, starts again, the Blush of a Hasidim. Never had children again after the war. A chassid's walking with him. And the chos is telling him that this child is in this in Matziach in fifth grade and third grade in Gomorrah and what? Mishai is. No, chos, I'm sorry. Hey, Rebbe, I'm sorry. Rebbe, I'm sorry. You have no children. I'm talking to you about my children. How can I do that? And the blush of a Rebbe says, I read this Misa. I was in Chicago. I read this Misa in Chicago. I told my wife, we're going to New York. Next man is Manim. I'm going into the blush of a Rebbe. I must see this man. I must see him. The only time I was able to see him was 99 years old. He says to the chos, Meine Kinder, deine Kinder, was an Afgemina, be as the Yiddish Kinder. The State of the Union. What's the State of the Union, Rabbi? The State of the Union is we have people who are willing to steig, you're willing to work, you're willing to do for Klaus. Then we have a union. We have people who are willing to do things for themselves. Then we have Lacho. We need Nisanel Ben Sur. We need Aaron Akoyan. We need Moshe Feder. We need the Blush of a Rebbe. I want to say something, everybody. Say. It's 9.59 in seven seconds. They always tell me I can speak as long as I want. I try to stop at 10 o'clock. I want to stop at 10 o'clock. I want to tell you, what are you doing here? What are you doing here at 10 o'clock at night? Why aren't you asleep at home? What, what are we doing here? You know what we're doing? We're trying to become better Yidin, to make a better union, to make a better Kali show. That's what we're trying to do. And we need to be mispowered that the country in which we live, in which we lived for so long, which has been so good, should be able to come back, lower the confrontation level, lower the hate. You want to disagree? Go disagree, do whatever you want. You got a, you got a Congress and you got a Senate and you got a judiciary and you got a legislation, you got checks and balances, you got a whole thing. You, you, uh, everybody learned in, I don't know what's going on anymore in elementary schools, but that's what we learned in elementary school, right? And we need it, Rabbi Say. Because Ghazal said, without it, it's Chaim below. Without it, it's Chaim below. Yidin like you, and Yidin watching, listening, a Yidin who are trying to dedicate themselves to become better people. That's our job. That's our achrayis. That's what we have to do. We should be zeichet to do it. We should be zeichet to do it. How much better it would be if the 300 million plus people in the United States of America would say, let's follow the example of the Orthodox Jews. Let's follow the example of what they do. Let's follow the example of how they live. And let's follow the example of trying to make the State of the Union, even if it can't be, I'll be halacha. Let it at least be with the Ruach of halacha, because we're living I'll be halacha. And that will spread that they should be living with the Ruach of Allah.
should all be zeichet to see that happen soon. We should all be zeichet to be a Samashiach. We should all be zeichet that no one should ever get hurt again. We should all be zeichet at Zohar Rabbah. Thank you for the opportunity. Excuse me. Shame you can share time like this, Boston. I'd like to give give a big yashikayach to our friends for the very inspiring Russia. I'd like to give a big yashikayach to Mr. Mrs. Ari Parnas for sponsoring tonight's year. We'd like to give a big yashikayach to Mr. Mayor Star for support of tonight's year. We wish us all the very well, Mr. Mayor. Well, Shalom v'imay dvora, Mashem Nosanot ala Shalom. I'd also like to give a big yashikayach to Mr. Mrs. David Dax for the support of tonight's year in honor of Av Cohen. To have the great schools of sponsoring this year, call Irgun Shir at 718-851-8651 or email ist at yeshivanet.com. I should care to everyone for coming. We have a great time. 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 We